Hello again, I'm Sergeant Major Dave Brown here to welcome you to the latest installment of United We Stand, Music to Connect Us, our virtual concert series here at the United States Army Band Pershing's Own. Today's program is called Throwback Thursday and we're taking a look back at highlights from previous Army Band performances. And this week, we are highlighting three of our most viewed soloists and we started with our violin virtuoso, Master Sergeant Marlisa Woods. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. The opening piece, the Christian sending mm -hmm. uh, suite, the first movement, that was absolutely incredible. And I have to tell our audience that before we started this interview, I was playing the recording of that piece that you played, and you asked me if it was Isaac Perlman. <laughs> and I said, no, that's you. <laughs> Uh, so kudos to you, because uh, I'm guessing that your inspiration for this piece was... Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. I mean, Isaac Perlman is why I started playing the violin, so of course. But he's, his recording of that particular one is just really famous, and so it really inspired me a lot. So how long does it take to learn a piece like that? Something like that. It's interesting. I mean, in some ways, pieces that are just fast notes like that mostly it's very methodical so it doesn't ne really take that long um i would say a good solid couple of weeks to really get the notes under the fingers and then a couple weeks after that to just get it um really consistent and and feeling good and all that and what would you say are the best practice techniques for those running fast notes is it is it just really slowly practicing or are you chopping it up into little pieces at closer to speed? Yeah, so a combination of all of the above, there's different techniques, but one of my favorite things to do is to actually play it twice as slow mm. and then the regular tempo, back to back little bits of it, and then phrase by phrase, because when something is like a moto perpetual where it's just running the whole time like that, um, it can be very boring though if you, if you just play it all the same. So I like to break it up into different phrases so that musically, even as it's going really fast, and then it's really helpful to practice it slowly so that you can hear then the musicality of it. And I also like to practice it in different bow strokes, um, mm. not always just separate, but sometimes slurring. And I find that by doing that, I can focus on my left hand and make sure that that's really, with the metronome, really precise, but then it also helps me to be more lyrical with the phrases as well. Okay, so when you say bow strokes, you're talking about the difference between going down and up versus per, for each note mm -hmm. versus one long bowing with several notes. Exactly. So you go back and alternate between those two. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that uh, violinists tend to not wear heavy jewelry on your left hand. Can you tell me about that? Yes, well, some people can do it, but I just can't. I just feel like when my fingers are moving really fast, I don't want anything that is going to uh, get in the way. And especially if, you, if your hands are a little bit sweaty or whatnot, it's just, I, I just need all of the focus on what I'm doing, and I don't need to be thinking about, oh, this you know, feels uncomfortable, and so now I'm going to miss my shift. <laughs> so that particular performance, do you remember that night? Do you remember that performance? Um... Because it was about seven years ago, I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay. I'm just wondering, like, do you remember being nervous? What are you thinking about when you're blazing through all those notes? Are you really focused because the technique is so difficult? Are you, have you learned it so well that your mind is wandering or you're thinking about something else? I mean, what's going on in your head when you're doing that? Yeah, when it's really that fast, I have to really focus and hone in really, really hard. And I kind of, um, the other thing is just as a performer, just blocking out negative thoughts, mm. you know, because there's always going to be that negative thought. And so in a way, like when I'm practicing, um, I will actually practice thinking a negative thought and, and being able to overcome it as I'm practicing so that I'm so that when that happens in performance, you know, I, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I, you know, punch you out and I'm going to just, you know, keep going and keep thinking positive thoughts and you know, keep the train running. So anticipate the fact that your mind might tell you, oh my gosh, I'm about to miss a note and be ready for that moment so it doesn't exactly. freak you out. Exactly. That's great. Well, we're going to hear one more blazing fast violin solo. I think it's pretty a pretty famous fiddle solo. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about what we're going to hear next? Yes. So actually, I was really inspired by Mark O'Connor, another virtu virtuoso in his own right. Um, the dude is just amazing how fast he can play. 
And um, so his version of, of Orange Blossom Special is really cool because he has all these fun quotes in it. And so I stole that idea and I put some, some of Army quotes in this version. I'm here with our next virtuoso, that's Staff Sergeant Chaz Sonoda here on Throwback Thursday. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. First question, where did you grow up? Where are you from? I'm originally from Torrance, California, and uh, I grew up there and then went to high school in Interlochen, Michigan. Uh, my last two years of high school were at the Interlochen Arts Academy. And uh, after graduating there, I moved to Chicago where I studied at DePaul University for my undergrad and the Northwestern for grad school. So I'm curious how long you've been playing the clarinet. When did you start playing and can you tell us how you picked that instrument? Sure, um, so I started the clarinet in fifth grade. Uh, there was a band option at our, our school and um, someone had come to demonstrate some of the instruments. And I, for some reason, had really liked the oboe. I think, I think it was the duck demonstration in Peter and the Wolf that really got me. Got it. Um, however, the oboe ended up being like twice as much in price and uh, my parents didn't want to pay that much. They weren't sure if I was gonna like it. So you went with the clarinet. And, and they saved you a lot of money and reeds probably yeah. doing that as well. 
So uh, we're going to feature a solo you played a few months back in February at a concert with a concert band. So tell us about this solo and this piece of music. Sure. So the concerto is titled Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, it's by a composer named Michael Doherty, who's on faculty at the University of Michigan. And this piece is broken up into four movements. And basically, um, his inspiration for this piece is a quote that is uh, something along the lines of, the wise person won't cross the Brooklyn Bridge in five minutes or even 20 minutes, but instead will linger on the various views <coughs> um, you can see around the bridge. And so the four movements are each titled different direction. Uh, the one that we performed on that concert is titled North. And so the inspiration is looking north from the Brooklyn Bridge, you see Manhattan, um, the skyline at the time, which he's kind of setting in the 1940s, would have been the Empire State Building, Chrysler Building, uh, Rockefeller. And uh, these were really the tallest buildings at the time. And um, also in the 1940s, you can think uh, jazz clarinet, Artie Shaw was huge in New York City. And so it's kind of set in this sort of clarinet, 1940s jazz setting. Um, the tall buildings, you'll kind of hear, uh, we're really playing in the stratosphere of the clarinet. Uh, it's a very exciting piece. It's a ton of fun to play with the concert band. So what is the range? How many octaves are you going through on this piece? And how does that relate to some other solos you've played? Sure. Um, wow. I think probably getting close to four octaves. Wow. Um, which is more than I've played on any other piece in my life. Okay. <laughs> I, I'd have to, I had to contact my old teacher from grad school actually to get some fingerings for this piece. Um, by the end of the piece, uh, the clarinet's really screaming at the highest register. Uh, the piece kind of starts out in a very comfortable range for the clarinet. I think you'll, you'll find it to be, it, it's pretty easy to listen at the beginning. Uh, and as it progresses, it gets faster and faster and higher and higher. And by the end, we're, we're at uh, basically the highest notes of um, the kind of extreme range of the clarinet. So uh, I remember this solo. I was there and it was great. The audience went crazy for it. Uh, I'm just curious, I, I watched you play and I thought, this is incredible. I, I know you practice a long time. How long did it take you to put this solo together? And are there any special practice techniques you used in order to make this what it was? Sure. Um, I probably spent about three or four months preparing for that concert. Um, special techniques, slow practice. Um, there's so many difficult passages in this piece that I would just tell myself I'm going to play it. 20 times perfectly every day the month before the concert. And uh, something that helped me quite a bit is actually that I played for a few of my colleagues here um, in the clarinet section at the band, as well as some colleagues from the other military bands uh, to give myself kind of a, a practice performance run uh, even before the first rehearsals. That's great. Well, I know the audience loved it, and I think that our online audience is going to love it as well. So be prepared to be wowed by our virtuoso clarinetist, Staff Sergeant Chaz Sonoda.
I'm here with our third virtuoso on our Throwback Thursday concert. It's our harpist, Sergeant First Class Nadia Pessoa. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So we're going to throw back to a concert from 2016 where you played a harp solo with the U.S. Army Concert Band. The first thing I'm curious about is tell us about the composer and a little bit about the piece. The composer is Alberto Ginastera, who is from Argentina, and the piece is his Harp Concerto, Opus 25. Now, did he have a particular inspiration for this piece? Did he write it for a person? What was the, the history of the piece coming about? Uh, so the concerto was commissioned by Edna Phillips, who at the time was the principal harpist for the Philadelphia Orchestra. And it took him quite a while to finish the piece. And so she'd actually retired by the time he was done, didn't get to premiere it. But it was premiered by famous harp soloist Nicanor Zabaleta. OK, so do we have any idea why it took him so long to write this concerto for her? Um, so the composer is quoted as saying that he found the harp very difficult to write for, harder than the violin and clarinet, and that's mostly because he has a very modern chromatic style of writing, and the harp is diatonic, so he found it a little tricky to navigate those waters. Okay, so chromatic is what you're saying is like if, if a person went to a piano and they played every white and black note all the way up and down the piano, you're getting every single possible note chromatic, and then diatonic meaning you know, just the notes of a major or minor scale. So, so some of the notes in between are not included. That's right. So on the harp, uh, depending on what pedals you have up or down, you're always in a key and you can't really get every single note. That's correct, or you're in a quasi-key. Okay, we'll call it a quasi-key, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you, you are able to use the pedals in order to change. So you're saying that, you know, the composer was used to writing for instruments that are able to play some in-between notes that is difficult on the harp at times to do. So, That's right. Um, I know this composer is famous for having some unique rhythm styles. Can you tell us about the rhythms in the piece or the, or the meters? Sure. So two things people can listen for are the juxtaposition of different rhythms, like you said, triple meter versus six eight, which is more of a duple two feel. Um, and also contrasting simpler folk sounding melodies with a more modern chromatic musical language. So um, I think we were talking earlier about the techniques that the composer put in for you. Some of them are not normal techniques for playing the harp. Can you tell us about that? That's right. So the piece or this movement is the third movement. It actually starts with a harp cadenza and there are a few different techniques and people can listen for. There are harmonics, which is where you're 
creating a sound that's actually an octave up and has a more bell-like tone. And those can be seen with a movement that's like this. And also pedal slides in the later part of the movement, which is where I'm changing the notes in a half step, but not by re-articulating. I'm doing it just with the pedal, so it kind of sounds like a slide. Mm. And also glissandos, but instead of glissandos with the fingers, which is what you normally see, he has called for some nail glissandos, which is a special effect and gives a more percussive sound. Okay, so do you remember how long it took you the first time you learned this piece to learn it? How long did it take you to learn the whole thing? I started the piece in grad school, and I think I probably worked on it for several months, um, maybe an entire semester before I really felt that I was comfortable with it. And the performance that we're going to see is one where you, uh, you resurrected the piece and uh, had a little bit of time to put it together. So uh, do you remember this performance this is, that we're going to show? Do you remember like I that do. night? Okay, and uh, it, it obviously went great, but I'm just curious as a virtuoso and you, you've practiced this piece so many, so many times and now you're on stage performing, is what is going through your mind? Is it, is it I've got to be very focused or is it to the point where you've learned it so much that you're just enjoying the sound of the music? Is it nerves? Do you, you know, what happens in your mind when you're performing in front of the concert band? It's a little bit of both. I was so thrilled, you know, this is one of my favorite pieces to play, and I was thrilled to be given the opportunity by Colonel Holton to do this piece, especially with band, because um, this is a very fine arrangement for band, and I'd never played that version before. Um, and yes, I think it's, it's both. I don't get too nervous, but I definitely do have to focus before the concert begins. And I think once you have the preparation done, then you can just kind of relax and focus on having fun with it. And since this is one of my favorite pieces to play, I just decided that I wanted to come out, enjoy the concert band, enjoy everything that was going on, and have fun. Excellent. So we close our Throwback Thursday with Hinas Darrow's Concerto for Harp. And this is the third movement, which starts with a cadenza. And just one programming note, next Thursday, we're gonna do another Throwback Thursday, but instead of being an evening concert at 7 p.m., we're gonna move it to the afternoon. And until we see all of you again, stay safe, stay strong, and stand united.